Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you how to use a frog lure for bass. And for my next how-to video, I'm going to go ahead and do a viewer vote. So go ahead and comment at the end of this video and let me know which lure you'd like to see reviewed next. And I'd like to uh, thank everyone again for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting on uh, all of my recent vids. I really appreciate all the support. And I want to let you guys know um, you now have the option, if you'd like, to donate uh, to me as well to show additional support. But uh, either way, uh, it's been awesome, lots of fun doing this channel, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. I want to just give you guys a tip. If a uh, pond like this is getting a lot of angling pressure, this is like my uh, second, third time here. And right now there's uh, three anglers fishing it, a guy over there, and there's uh, two kids over in those bushes over there fishing. Um, and the, oh, one, two, boom! Oh my gosh. Anyways, I was saying, um, what you're going to want to do if there's a lot of angling pressure is that you're either going to want to fish the frog really fast or uh, really slow. Because uh, most guys, when they fish the frog, are going to be fishing a medium pace, which is a, a great retrieve. But if uh, they're all doing it, you're going to want to give the bass something different. One, two, there it is. Boom goes the dynamite. Like I was mentioning earlier, guys, the key is you need to wait two seconds before you set that hook. And that's, this is why you need the braid, because that bass is stuck in there. Oh, it's a, it's a nice bass too, I think. Man, he really is just going through every freaking weed in there. Just got to keep the pressure on him. Reel him in as quick as possible. There we go. Ooh. There we go, that's a nice fish. That's why you wait two seconds. So you uh so you swallow the frog like that. So if there's a perfect hook set straight up, vertical hook set, there's two things you take home today. It's one, wait two seconds before you set the hook on that frog on that frog, and two, use braided line so you get them out of that slop. And I'm not gonna lie, usually um I'm not very good at waiting two seconds. It's usually the fourth or fifth fish after I miss them then I finally wait two seconds. But I was determined to uh, wait two seconds today just so I can give you guys a uh, good example. Another reason why you guys definitely need to use braid is because that fish hit at the end of a uh, 60 yard cast. So any stretch in line I would have definitely missed that hook set. And uh, you want that braid uh, to make some long casts. As you see right now I'm standing on some logs to give myself an extra three feet advantage. Um, these fish, that fish uh, was holed up all the way in the thickest pads on this whole pond right here. And it's possible that because of all the fishing pressure up shallow, um, and the fish might be, uh, might have learned to uh, stay near the middle where it's safer and uh, they won't get as much angling pressure. Because you guys can see there's one guy in a blue shirt straight there, black shirt right there, black shirt right there, it's three people. And then they've got over to my right, there's three kids over there fishing which definitely is a sign of a lot of pressure. So you definitely gotta do something different in order to catch the bass out of here. All right, I'm gonna show you how to uh, walk the dog with a frog lure. And the uh, easiest frog I've uh, seen to walk is this uh, Spro Bronze Eye Shad. The uh, design makes it really easy to walk. Not as easy as a spook, but still it doesn't take much effort. Just, just gotta give twitch, quick twitches of the rod tip, keep a rhythm, and it actually walks about a tiny bit under the surface. I, I, it's probably a little tough for you guys to see the walking action, but it has a really smooth walking action. Just got to keep up a nice rhythm. And uh, let me show you guys a different angle to show you how I'm working the rod tip when I'm uh, walking this frog. You want to have a little bit of slack in your line when you're uh, twitching the frog. That's what gets the dart side to side. And you got to keep up a, a continuous rhythm because walking a frog is definitely a little bit harder than uh, walking something like a spook. So if you guys ever come across a, a body of water looking similar to this that's uh, completely covered with vegetation, you have uh, two options to fish it. One, a frog. Or two, you can punch through it with a, a heavy weight and a, a soft plastic. But uh, the ideal thing to do would be to use a frog over it because uh, when you have the whole pond littered with um, pads or what, what have you, it's going to be difficult to cover enough water just by punching through it to get enough uh, quality bites. So 
Uh, something like a frog is great. You can cover tons of water. And uh, the strikes from a frog, second to none when it comes to uh, bass fishing lures. Since a uh, frog is such a great search bait, a lot of times uh, anglers will use one to uh, find an active group of bass. Like on a, a bigger body of water, if they're in a tournament, they'll throw this around the frog until they get a few bites or catch a couple. Then they'll go back through this exact same area with a, a punch rig and uh, oftentimes they'll catch uh, quite a few more doing uh, more of a uh, slower approach and uh, really punching through the vegetation to get the uh, more lethargic bass. And when you guys are throwing the frog and you got something in a place like this where there's uh, just a million places a basket hide, uh, key areas you want to focus on are uh, you want to cast more towards uh, shallow areas in uh, the uh, early hours and later in the day then um, you, try, you want to try to find areas that have a mix of vegetation. Like when uh, two types, two or three types of vegetation meet, uh, the more types the better. That's often a place uh, bass would like to hang out and wait to ambush something. Then um, also if you have any uh, hard structure like uh, wood with, um, with the pads, it's also an area you want to focus on and definitely make a few casts to uh, somewhere like that if you happen to stumble upon it. It's definitely a likely area bass might be hiding. Then uh, midday, you'd probably want to cast more towards the center in deeper water. That's uh, where they'd be more likely to hang out. It might be a little tougher to get them to bite midday when they're not as actively feeding, but it can definitely be done. And uh, depending on the day, sometimes you guys will have more luck just uh, twitching the bait along nice and slow. Twitch, pause, twitch, pause, twitch, pause type of cadence. Then other days the bass might want a constant uh, twitch twitch or walking cadence. Then the uh, third type that I found to be effective is a twitch twitch pause or twitch 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 pause and kind of mixing it up and being real erratic with it. And usually you'll find uh, one type of retrieve works better than the other on a given day. So you always want to mix it up until uh, you get a few bites on one type and you can stick to that type of retrieve the rest of the day and hopefully uh, put together a pattern. So a, uh, so a uh, popping frog is a great addition to the uh, frog family. You fish it just like a popper with twitches and it makes a good amount of noise and disturbance. I like to throw it anywhere we got pads and if there's like a hole in the pad, like uh, right there, then I'll fish it slowly, giving it a pop, see if anything comes up and eats it. It's a great change up from uh, the regular frog if everyone you know, uh, if you know a lot of people are throwing the regular frog in a body of water, you can change it up with the popping frog. And it's also great if you're uh, skipping under some tree branches or something and uh, you can keep it you can keep it under that tree for a long period of time just by giving it short little pops all right about to call it a day been out here for about 90 minutes or so um, sorry I couldn't catch more fish for you guys but uh, that's why they call it fishing and not catching let me go ahead and do an overview of uh, the frogs that I carry around and uh, where I use each of them and uh, if you guys are ever out and see some trash on the ground, uh, go ahead and be a good Samaritan and pick it up. And don't be one of those guys that leaves trash just lying around because it makes the rest of us look bad. And it just makes just ruins the environment. There's no need to litter. All you got to do is pick up after yourself and the places we fish will look a lot nicer. So anyways, uh, let me go on to my frogs. So what I'm running is, uh, I got a couple live target frogs. Uh, this is my biggest frog. I like to run this one when uh, it's, there's a lot of vegetation, like too thick to work a frog. I just try to throw this on top to make some disturbance and I uh, hope they can notice it enough to pop through. Little black one. Uh, same idea, but this one I'd probably use more on maybe a cloudy day and skipping under trees or something like that. And I got my two popping frogs right here, which are good when the water's a little more murky. You need some more noise and um, also good if you're trying to keep the bait in one area say you're fishing next to a log or under a tree or in an open hole then popping frogs the way to go it's also a good change up if you know a lot of other guys are throwing the frog and lastly my favorite the most versatile frog in my cl uh, collection the uh, Spro bronze eye shads they're uh, super easy to walk uh, great action 
great skipping. It's super easy to skip them. And uh, you can just use them anywhere. Throwing it up on an open bank early in the morning, skipping under trees, throwing it over pads, between holes, walking it. Uh, these are great frogs. The plastic's um, very durable, so it's a little bit tougher, but if you have braid, you'll, you won't have any problem with that hook set. And uh, that's it for the video today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, tomorrow I'll be having a uh, small tag team subscriber tournament where it's just uh, me and five other guys. We each on a team, three teams, and throwing in some lures. And uh, whoever catches, whoever wins the tournament wins that uh, bag of lures. But I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. And it might be a little bit of a longer episode. And uh, see you guys uh, next time. Bye.